What is up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial number 30. And if you guys remember last time, uh, I was explaining to you how our uh, Viganeer cipher worked and how we were using it with our chain block cipher. Um, and basically what it did, this is just a really quick recap, I'm not going to go through everything again. Uh, if you want more information, you can go to the 29th video, which we explained it. So what's going to happen is if we're starting with a character uh, and we want to shift it uh, by another character, we can take the values at the specific locations of it, uh, like A and B for instance, and we can shift uh, we can take the integer value of a, which in this case is, or in our case, is going to be zero because we're going to go from zero to twenty-five for our twenty-six characters, and b, which is one, and we can just add them together. Uh, and when you add it together, that's going to give us our shifted, and I'm doing air quotations right now. That's going to give us our shifted value, our encrypted value, and then with that encrypted value, we feed it into our key, in which we do a second shift. And then we take the whole text that we had and we put it all into our next initial vector uh, so that the next vector will be working off of our total cipher or our previous cipher text that we got. So getting back into the programming, um, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be working on our encrypt function, which is awesome because I know you guys want to encrypt some shit. Uh, so what we're going to do is first of all, I'm going to show you how we can get the uh, integer representation of a character or at least the way we're going to be using. And the way we can do this is, I'm just gonna put this here. We're gonna do, so if we have the character A, if we go ahead and run this as it is, it's just gonna print out plain text A. Um, but if we want the number that's associated with it, we can use character.get numeric value. And this is just going to convert it to a number for us. And if we look at it now, it's giving us 10. That's because the location of A in the list of all the characters in this set is going to be 10, whereas 0 through 9 are going to be the first 10 numbers. So in our uh, encryption, we're only going to be working with letters. I don't want to work with uh, numbers or special characters or anything because it helps with uh, introducing a few extra concepts. So if we take this character uh, and we got the integer value of it, and I ran this before I showed you, it was 10. Um, so what we can do is we can actually start working on our function. Now I'm going to delete this because this is we're going to, how we're going to be representing uh, A. There is another way in which we can just do int of A. This is going to give us a different number also. This is going to give us 97 because this is, I think, the entire Unicode, uh, the entire Unicode list of all the characters, and the character A is just positioned at 97. So let's go ahead and work on our encryption function. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to convert all of our strings here into character arrays that do not include any non-alphabetic uh, characters. So that, that's actually not as hard as it sounds because it's pretty much going to be the same thing repeated for each different thing. So we're going to do it once and you'll see how easy it is for you to just repeat the same thing if you need to. So first let's create a uh, character array. We'll do uh, character, let's call this C text because this is going to be like our, uh, uh, let's make it plain text, or P text for plain text. Um, and we're going to set this equal to text dot uh, to character array and it's going to give me an error because I need to make this an array. Right. So text dot to character array is going to just convert it to a from a string to a character array because that's all a string really is. It's just a collection of characters. And while that's while that will convert it to the array, it doesn't necessarily get rid of non-alphabetic characters. So in order to do that, we can take the string object uh, that we're using, the text here, and we can do uh, dot replace all, and this will allow us to replace a specific uh, text that we're looking for uh, with something else. 
And what we're going to re be replacing, and this is how you do like a set. This is going to be the set of all non uh, A through Z, A through Z or capital A through Z characters. Oh, and yeah, because this takes two strings. And then what we're going to be replacing with is we're just going to be deleting it, so we're going to replace it with nothing. Uh, and that's going whenever it finds any instance of any non lowercase a through z or capital case a through z, uh, it's going to uh, it's and then it's going it's going to get rid of it and then it's going to convert it to the character array. Now there's kind of one more step we need to do because in the case in it we kind of want the program to only recognize. Uh, one case type, I guess. Uh, it's going to be lowercase or uppercase, and I personally just prefer to use lowercase. Some people would use uppercase, it doesn't really matter. So we'll do dot uh, to lowercase, and that'll just convert it to all lowercase characters. It'll take all uppercase and just convert it to a lowercase. So now, we've taken our text, we've replaced it with the characters that we don't, uh, with the characters that we don't want with nothing, and we've converted it all to lowercase and then to a character array that we're storing in our key text uh, variable. Now, it's going to be really easy to do this for the next two of them because we've already done all the work for the first one. And it was just understanding what was going on here. So, and there's a really cool uh, hotkey that you can use if you want to re repeat text in, uh, in NetBeans. So if you do control shift down, it's going to literally copy the line that you're on and it's going to paste it in the next line below it. And I can do this twice because I'm going to be doing it with both of these two variables. And I'm going to create two new character array variables. First one, we're going to make this our P key. That's just going to be our plain P. Sure. And we'll also make this our P. Uh, let's just make this P I vector. Now that we have all of our strings, we are going to what we want to do is create a block size. How big of a block do we want to make that we're going to feed into each of the next uh, encryptions? Because you know how I was talking about the uh, the chain or the chain block cipher takes a block and it uh, shifts it with the vector, then it shifts it with the cipher or it shifts it with the key, and then it uses the outputted encrypted encrypted text and it uses that as our next initial vector. So we need to create a size. How big do we want this uh, block size to be? And the block size is, always, is, I think, pretty much always going to be dependent on the vector that we're using. So we can do, uh, we're going to create an integer. It's just going to be an integer that stores the vector. And let's just call this our uh, the size is going to be block size. And we're going to set it to pi vector dot length because that's just going to give us how large it is and how many characters there are in this. And then that's what we're going to be using for that. So now we're going to be creating a for loop. And what this for loop is going to do is we're going to be going through um, all of the values of our vector and uh, shifting a position in our plain text that uh, by our vector first. So we can do for int x equals zero x is less than b size. Ew. Wow. Alright, x is less than b size x plus plus, right. So what this is going to do is just going to iterate over the entire uh, array. So let's create a integer array also because we're going to we're going to want to shift these by numbers and we're going to want to store those numbers. So I want to make sure we have those uh, to use. So let's create an integer array and we're going to do well. Let's just let's see. Let's, let's call this cipher integers. Uh, and we're going to set this to a new int of size block size is b size. Right. <clears throat> so that's just going to save it as size uh, b size. 
And what we're going to do from here is we're going to shift. We're going to take first. We're going to take the vector. We're going to shift it with the text, and we're going to sort as C ints. So going through here. So what we're going to generally be doing, if we're going to be using C ints, uh, we're going to want to do C ints of x equals. We're going to do the plain text and the uh, initial vector or PIV. We're going to add those first. Um, so let's do character dot get numeric value and we'll call it we'll do this p text of x because we're going to be using we're going to be comparing the same value here as the one in here we're just going to be working in blocks <coughs> uh, and you'll see how that how that works out here in a minute and we're going to add that with character dot get numeric value of uh, pi vector also of x. And, all right, and we're going to store it like that. Now, at first, this is so if we have two characters, a and a, this is going to be doing uh, 10 plus 10, which would give us 20. And if we try to uh, modulus that, so normally at the end of this, you would do mod uh, 26 because that's how many characters we have in our alphabet. Um, but if you try to mod that, um, it's going to give us a number that's, uh, so we're, we'll end up with, it's going to give us a character that's different from what it normally would be because we still have those extra 10 characters, 0 through 9, uh, that exist before all of it. So if we take our character, so what's going to happen is it's going to compare it and it's going to add it, but it runs into that issue where you get 10 and 10, which is 20. Uh, for just for the character A, which would normally be 0. So going percent 26 wouldn't give us the right number. So what we can do is we can take the, the numeric value that we get for each of these and we can subtract it by 10. And what that's going to do is allow us to work from the range of 0 through 25 um, because the character A starts 10 digits into uh, starts 10 digits into the list. So this now lets us work with digits 0 through 25. But we also run into this issue where if the vector is larger than the text that we have, we need to we need to use something else. So I don't know if uh, I don't know if I explained it uh, what we would be doing. But anytime we need to shift a vector with something that isn't here, we usually shift it with a character that's not used very often, like Q, X, or Z. Um, so I'm also going to be doing this in the same instance where X lies outside of the range of our pretext. If we're taking blocks of it and you get to the last block and there's only like three characters in that block, we want to use some other characters to fill it up so we can fill up the entire block and just populate it and put it out. So it's going to use either, uh, like I was saying, Q, X, or Z uh, in order to move it over. So in the case where uh, X is greater than P text of X, or P text dot length, we're going to pretty much be doing the same thing as right here, except we're not going to be using, uh, we're not going yeah, we're not going to be using p-text. Instead, we're going to be using just the character 